those days where I woke up and I just truly did not want to do anything. I didn't want to get out of bed. I didn't want to get ready. I didn't want to do like any of the things that I had planned for this day. You know when you just like lie in bed and try to rationalize your way out of all of your responsibilities? That is what I was trying to do this morning, but we're up. It's going to be a good day. It's supposed to be a little bit warmer which I'm really excited about because it has been just like what feels like an eternal winter where I live and I'm just so ready for it to not be snowing and ready to have some sunshine and I think we're gonna get a little bit of that today so I'm excited to vlog and just catch you guys up because it has been what feels like forever since I've just done like a day in the life vlog so welcome to my day in the life. First things first, let's get ready. Now, the final thing that we need to get ready for the day today is a perfume, and I have been on the hunt recently for like a signature scent. I personally really like to have a scent that I associate with like spring and summer, but I feel like I've changed it up so much over the years that I don't have a signature scent, like the scent that someone would smell and automatically think of you, and so I have been searching over the last little bit to find that, and so that's why I am super excited to be working with Dossier on today's video. If you guys have never heard of Dossier, they are a clean affordable alternative to luxury perfumes and essentially they create ultra realistic dupes of very expensive perfumes that you guys have probably smelled before from brands like Tom Ford, YSL, and they actually source the ingredients from the same places, but they make it really easy for you to try those perfumes out. And the best part in my opinion is that they are all clean versions as well. Dossier scents are all vegan and cruelty free. And because of the fact that you don't have to pay for any of the crazy retail markups like you usually have to pay for on luxury brands, you can save up to 70 to 90% on your perfume. Like I said, I have been in my perfume testing era recently, and two of the ones that I wanted to try from Dossier were Woody Sandalwood because it is inspired by La Labo's, I believe, Santel 33 Eau de Parfum. And this is the Woody Sandalwood scent. It has top notes of violet leaves and cardamom, middle notes of orris, ambrox, cedarwood, and cypriol, and base notes are musk, sandalwood, and amber. And honestly, it's just such a good, like warm, wintry scent. I absolutely love this one. It's one that I really was drawn to, so I do like that one for like a fall winter. But for more of a lighter like spring and summer scent, I'm currently testing out their scent called Powdery Coconut. This one also has notes of cardamom, so I guess I'm just drawn to that scent in general. And it is inspired by Tom Ford's Sole Blanc Eau de Parfum, and I absolutely love that scent. I actually wore it for a little while when we were in Florida because I just had the little tester for it but it's so expensive and that's why I didn't actually go and buy the full perfume. And then I also just don't like wearing perfumes that I know are full of so many chemicals, especially as a mom that is breastfeeding. I like to try and keep my perfumes clean. So this is the one that I'm actually gonna wear for today, given that it's a nice spring vibe outside and you don't need a lot of this. Like the scent is actually very strong. So one spring you should be good to go. I just love that I feel like I can get that high quality luxury scent for a fraction of the price and with ingredients that I can actually feel good about so if you guys are interested in trying dossier out as well and looking for your signature scent there are so many options on the website i highly recommend going and checking it out and thank you so much to dossier for working with me on today's video so one of the things that i needed to update you guys on was the playroom i don't know if you remember what the layout looked like before but basically i came in here and just swapped where everything was it's not even the best use of space however just moving things around and keeping all the same things in here made this room so much more exciting and we're getting so much more use out of it. So I put the pikeler that was in her bedroom into this corner and moved the chair out into the living room just because she was trying to use this before every nap in bedtime and I was like, obviously you just wanna play with it more. So we have it in here. I moved a little play kitchen over here by the window. We've got the little Picasso tiles. That's a magnet tiles knockoff and it's much cheaper. Same level of quality in the corner down there. And then I have her play shelf, some seasonal book rotation, kind of like a craft area, some play scarves, and then Jude's Love Every Gym as well. I have been using the BB Hug Me pregnancy pillow for his tummy time for the last little bit because he still does often puke in tummy time and so I find that that's just better for his tummy and it works so well for tummy time, it's amazing. And then all of the toy storage is still in here as well, but I have just found that switching things up has made such a huge difference. And then obviously toy rotations help too. So these are from the 22 to 24 month kit from Love Every 
and I don't know if a toy has ever gotten so much use in our house as this one. I am finding these little pegs literally everywhere. Every single day, she comes to me with like a new use case for them. She cooks with them in her kitchen. They are seashells. They are hidden treasures that I find in cabinets and things everywhere. She is obsessed. So the 22 and 24 month kit has probably been our favorite so far. That kit also has a lot of other fun things like this little drawstring bag that has animals in it and they can basically match up the animals with the cards so you've gotten a lot of use out of that a lion what does the lion say <laughs> oh that's a pretty convincing roar and then we also did just get a couple of their toys from their target collection which is super fun they're now available in targets and we obviously don't have target in canada but if you do live near a target you can find some of every toys there too so this is the chloe and her car toy which has been a lot of fun to just have drive around well, that's driving away from me. We also got this little shape puzzle here um, just because it's fun for shape recognition. And then the last one that we picked up from that collection was this little Montessori wooden rainbow stacker, which has also been used for a lot of imaginative play. Yeah. You remember when we were using it like a chair and the monkey just reclines in the chair? <laughs> So fun. So fresh toys are always fun in the playroom for a new season, but I also did a seasonal book rotation, which is super fun too. So I grabbed a few new books for spring for the kids. There's a few that are still in the mail, but so far I got this slow down book, um, 50 Mindful Moments in Nature, and it is so beautiful. It basically just has a bunch of different photos and explanations of different things that happen in nature throughout the season. So it's a really nice one for spring. And then we pulled out some of our other spring related books. We've had a lot of fun reading this one. We have the We Are the Gardeners book. And then this one is also new for spring. Up in the Garden, Down in the Dirt from Kate Messner. Really, really pretty. I also did just grab this little golden book story about Easter and it actually tells the story very well. So I'm enjoying that. The ones that I am still waiting on in the mail are the new um, Springboard book by Gerda Mueller. I picked that one up, but the shipping is just taking a while. And then I also got the book Bug Hotel um, just because I'm excited to dive into the world of bugs and hopefully have children that are less afraid of them than I am. You okay, boo boo? That was a little bit of a tumble. A little bit Yeah, are you feeling okay? Yeah, okay. I am just going to make myself a quick coffee. Um, we're gonna go thrifting this morning with my friend Brittany. I have not been in so long and I'm trying to just look for some more things to like decorate the house because I'm now like getting more into the just desire to like make things really cozy in here, which is funny coming right out of the winter. I just feel like we put so much of the energy and investment into the basement, rightfully so. And I have kind of put just like decorating the upstairs on pause a little bit in the meantime. And so I just want things on the walls. Like I want artwork. There's yeah. Brit Brit. I want artwork. Hold that thought. All right, Brittany's here. So we're making two coffees. Yeah, so I just want to get more decor. But another exciting update is that I also got toddler beds for the kids. And I feel like it's a bit of a story, but I'm hoping to refinish them. So essentially, I really wanted to find for Vivian a like antique looking toddler bed. But I also know that I want the kids to have like similar looking beds because they're both going to be in there at the same time eventually. And I knew that if I got a antique bed that I would like not be able to match them if I tried to get one now and then another one later. So I was like, what are the odds that you would find two antique beds that are the same and that I'd find them for a good price and that all of the stars would just align on this. So I kind of just like let the thought go. But then I happened to find on Marketplace near where my dad lives, a listing at a local thrift store and they were selling two like 100 year old beautiful antique beds that were solid wood. And he was able to go and pick them both up for me. And I think I paid $200 for both beds because we got the price down too. So I am going to refinish them. I'm going to be kind of going on my antique refinishing journey. It's not something that I've ever done before, but I can't wait to show you guys. And I think it's gonna look so good when both of them are like done in there together. It's gonna be a while that it will just be Vivian in hers and Jude in the crib, but at some point in this vlog, I'll show you guys what they look like before I've refinished. Brett and I are matching today. I didn't even realize that until we got in the car. We both have, what is this? pattern called i don't know quilted jacket look i got this last night at the mall and it was a 70 dollars jacket for 10 bucks from where? baby 
It was in the wow. clearance section, so I don't know if it's still going to be available, but go and check your local Old Navy because $70 for 10 bucks last night. So we're on our way to the thrift store now. It was honestly such good timing because I forgot that we had plumbers coming today to work on the basement. Basically, it's a whole long story and I haven't vlogged in so long that I have not like brought you guys up to speed on it, but we were like right about to lay all of the flooring down and that was like the last thing that I had updated you guys on as we were choosing our like flooring for the basement, which I think we decided we're gonna go with vinyl and that was the next step. But then we went to Florida and when we came back, there was like water in the basement from all the snow that had melted. And we were trying to figure out where it was coming from, what the source was. We had to literally dig up so, and by we, I mean Jared, so much of the flooring to like re-pour it and to reroute some channel thing. So we have plumbers there today except the doorbell rang and I was like why is Brittany ringing the door Brittany doesn't ring the doorbell she just comes inside but the doorbell rang and I like went with Viv because I thought it was going to be her and I opened it and like literally opened the door like a Disney princess I was like hello like so excited to make a big deal and then it was a plumber that just looked at me like what the heck so they're in the basement now <laughs> sorry don't repeat that um so they're in the basement now and then Jared's parents are going to be here for a couple days because his dad is coming to help so that's the current update but anyway it got really loud all of a sudden and it's just not nice to be in the house for the whole day when it's going to be loud so it was good timing for us to leave it's bright it's bright boy it's very bright I want to get like a thrifted denim jacket. Yeah, that's like that's a little bit of a lighter wash. Yeah, that one's cute. We're gonna try it. Oh, that's cute. I feel like I need a better mirror than, than the viewfinder on my camera. Look at me. What do we think? We just got back from the thrift store. Both kids are asleep now, but the transition out of it was not very smooth. If you're in the thick of the toddler tantrum stage like I am, I feel for you. We made it through, we worked it out, but it is just like tough to remain steady and calm in those moments and to just hold it down for your child. And so I always feel like I just need to take a second afterwards to be like, wow, that was really hard and just like process it and then move forward because it is hard to keep yourself like regulated in your own emotions in check, which is what your toddler needs in those moments. But I also feel like it is good to just give yourself a second afterwards to like really take a deep breath. One of the reasons that I know we are having more tantrums right now is because of just like sleep, naps and everything like that. I've talked a little bit on my Instagram about naps just being a struggle for us at this point. Um, I felt like through that 18 month nap regression that we were not going to have them anymore, but then we made it through. And at that point there was like two weeks that we didn't have them, but then all of a sudden they came back and it was very consistent. And now I feel like we're kind of at a point where it's like 50, 50 again. So there's been a lot of like big feelings that have come with that and just a lot of extra tiredness in the house. But all that to say, I know that it's just a season. It's not going to last forever. And Jude has actually been sleeping really well in the last little bit. So that has been super, super nice. And I want to give you guys more of an update on that too. But first of all, I want to show you guys what I got at the thrift store. So you guys did see this in there. It's a little like stone looking vase. I just like this style and I thought that this could look good on our sideboard or somewhere in the kitchen because I do want to do some sort of like open shelving in there just to add some more decor. The secret with this one is that if you turn it around, it's pretty ugly, but that's okay. We're just going to keep it facing forward and I will find a use for that. So I'm excited about that. I also grabbed this little wooden hanger for the kids room. This was only $1.99 and I just thought that this would look cute for any of the little things that they have, whether it's clothing, hanging, toys, silk scarves, backpack. I just thought that that would be cute for their bedroom. Also got this little wicker basket tray. I am such a sucker for a good basket. Literally every single time I see a basket that I like, I feel like I get it and my house is just filled with baskets, but they're so practical. I use them for everything. And I especially like these tray style ones for Vivian because I like to give her toys on them that are like disassembled so that she can take the entire tray and then go and work on what's inside of it. But I thought this one was a perfect size if I wanted to do something for a craft. So like a piece of paper could go in here, some crayon, some paint, something like that, and just present the entire prepared activity. So I grabbed that. 
thought this was just a really pretty like landscape. I think it is a watercolor. It's kind of hard to tell, um, but I thought it was beautiful and I do like the color of the frame. I'm not 100% sold on it, but I want to just try a couple different placements and see what I think. I did get this one as an alternative option, just like a gold frame. If I wanted to try to remove it from this and put it in this one instead, I feel like we have a lot of gold accents in our house right now. And like once our kitchen is redone, the hardware is also going to be gold. So I don't want to go over the top with gold, but I honestly feel like at this point, I just want to start like mixing and matching and testing things out. And if I don't love it, I can change it. And that's why I specifically want to do some like thrifted decor because it's so much more affordable to actually change things out if you don't end up loving it. But I thought that was a really nice print. And then Brittany found something super cute for me in the clothing section. Unless I know specifically that I'm looking for something like that denim jean jacket, which I did not buy. I just felt like the arms were too short on it. I just avoid the clothes altogether. I have to know what I'm going for. And Brittany does not have that limitation. Like she can just find things in any amount of clothing racks. And she found this adorable Zara girls quilted jacket in there. This is just so cute for spring. It's got like big chunky buttons on it, kind of like a vintagey looking vibe. And it reminds me so much of the one that I sold on my whatnot show a couple weeks ago. And it was actually like the highest selling item on the show just because everyone loved it so much. Brittany really came through on that one. Then I also just got a bunch of books because they were all $1.50 and we found some good ones. We got this little book of space rockets, just a fun like kids science book that talks about spaceships, astronauts, all that fun stuff. So we got that. So sorry for the sound, the plumbers are working downstairs, but I also got this Christmas treasury, which I know it's early, but it's never a bad time to just collect Christmas things whenever you see them on sale. I've been on the hunt for similar things and the illustrations in here are just really, really beautiful. So love that. Brittany found this book on the human body, which I thought was just a good thing to have in the library. I got this vintage Walt Disney fun to learn book. So this is the It's a Small World copy. There are 12 in this series and these are from the 80s and this is in such good condition. So I was super excited to snag that. And then I also got this Where's That Reptile book. This is like a science-based kind of like hide and seek and point and find type book where there's just a few different pages on different animals. So I thought that was a nice addition to the library and that is everything that I got at the thrift store. So as I mentioned, I did want to give a little bit of an update when it comes to sleep in Jude because the last thing that I had updated you guys on was that he was in our room waking up like three to five times a night. Like it was actually really, really tough and we've made some changes since then. So. A couple of weeks ago, I want to say like two and a half weeks ago, we actually moved him into the spare room and we have him in there in a pack and play. And I actually also have a slumber pod, which is basically like a blackout tent that you can put over a pack and play when you're traveling. But I put that around the pack and play in there for now, just because our spare room doesn't have blackout curtains. And I didn't want to invest in them because I know that we're not going to have him in there long term. And also because our spare room is like very frequently used. That's why, again, both of the kids are gonna to be together because we have family that come and stay with us. Our family don't live around here. And so it makes a lot of sense for us to have a very like functional spare room. So he's been in and out a little bit since we've moved him, but I did end up moving him a couple of weeks earlier than I was planning on it. I was thinking originally six months is the timeline that we would do. And I didn't really feel ready to move him. Like I felt very sad and honestly still miss having him in in our room just because I think like the fact that I birthed him in this bedroom makes it just like feel so much more connected for some reason. The thought of moving him out even at six months just felt like sad to me and I was very sad to have him go but honestly you guys the very first night that he was in there it was a little bit hard but the second night he slept so so well like better than he had slept since the night that he was born and basically what I've been doing now is if he cries in the night, which he still does, I just go in there and I feed him and I put him right back down to sleep because he settles very well after a feeding. Um, but he wakes up so much less. And I think a lot of it was the fact that we were just waking up when he was right beside me in like the baby bay. So the baby bay was still great. Like he still fit in there and he could have kept sleeping in there. But I think that he just 
needed a little bit more quiet and to have a little bit of space from us. And since he's been in that room, he'll only wake up like twice in the night. So he'll usually wake up anywhere from like 10 to 12. But I found that if I go in and do a dream feed, he often doesn't wake up. Like he'll wake up a little bit to eat, but just enough to eat and then go back to sleep. And then he wakes up one more time around like three or 4 a.m. And then he'll wake up for the day at like six or seven. So honestly, we went from like a minimum of three to five night wakings down to like truly one in the middle of the night and then one dream feed since we made the change. And it has been good for all of us, I think, to have that space as hard as it was for me to not have him in our room anymore. When we have people come over, he just comes back into our room anyway. And like, he's gonna be in our room tonight and for like the next four days because Jared's parents are coming. So they'll be in the spare room and June will be back with us. So. It's been kind of like a staggered approach to things, but I just wanted to give him an opportunity to get a little bit more sleep and to find more of his bearings when it comes to nighttime sleep before they're both together. And honestly, now with what's going on with our toddler, I don't know at what point that will happen. I was planning on literally doing it like two weeks from now. That was the game plan and the timeline, but it's just not the time. I don't know when it will be the time, but there's so much more that we need to figure out first. And I'm just coming to terms with that and accepting it because sometimes the timelines that we have in mind for our kids that we think make the most sense do not actually make the most sense for them in practicality. And I'm okay with that. such a long winter here that honestly whenever it's over like zero degrees I try and get the kids into the backyard for a little bit just to get some fresh air because it helps all of us to be a little bit less stir crazy but I've been dreaming and trying to think of what we want to do back here this summer because we aren't going to be doing pink. you found a pink ball no way look at that it's been living out here all winter long that's kind of lonely for it. But yeah, there's lots of random stuff that we want to do here this summer. I explained it when we first moved in, but the previous owners, I'll see if you guys can see, have kind of done like a little trail around the whole backyard. And we do like it. We want to keep it in some spots, but we don't want to have it everywhere just because we don't need it. And then that way there's less like green space. So this is where my pumpkin patch lived. We are actually going to get rid of this green fence this summer, I think. That's the game plan. So that will all just be grass that we're gonna grow over there. And then along a lot of this trail, we'll do grass. And then this whole garden section back here is kind of a mess, so that will also be grass. But I'm gonna preserve and just take care of and try and make the gardens that are back there just flourish a little bit more because they're feeling a little bit sad after the winter. <laughs> nice job, you kicked the pink ball. You have a pink ball, yeah. Our backyard here is half an acre. And so last summer I was just so pregnant and was just doing my best to like keep the grass watered, to keep weeds from growing up. And even that I didn't do well at. So this year I need to actually figure out like how to for real garden. It is not something that I've really ever done before, but I'm super excited to learn how to do more of. I think I'm gonna really enjoy the time back here this summer and this spring. And so, yeah, you guys are gonna see a lot more of this garden space in the next couple of months. Yes. So surprisingly enough, I was able to get this little guy down for a nap after his nap outside. I didn't think that he would transfer and he didn't, but I just rocked him back to sleep a little bit and then he took another like 30, 40 minute nap in here before bedtime, which is good. Cause that last nap is a bugger. It was really hard to get them to take, but I wanted to show you guys Jude's little spare room makeshift set up right now. So this is our spare room. I don't often film in here because there's not really a need to, but I got the little sound machine down here for him. I just stripped all the bedding on this because my dad was just here for a little bit. And then Jared's parents will be on here soon, so we'll stretch it out to be a queen bed for them. 
And then over here is where Jude sleeps. So we have our little playpen in here and the slumber pod just zips up and around to block that out because obviously it's very bright in this room. The curtains are not really doing the trick to make it black out. So we just pull the slumber pod up and then I leave it like with a little bit of light coming through just so he doesn't get used to like full sensory deprivation because Vivian's room isn't even that dark. The slumber pod gets so, so dark and I don't want him to get used to that, but so far it's working for us. It gives him a little bit of space and he's able to take some good naps in here too. So that's what we're doing. You guys, I forgot that I was vlogging today. I almost just like literally went to bed and just didn't even wrap up, wrap up this vlog is because I finished making dinner and we had dinner a little bit later tonight like the whole chicken in the oven and everything wasn't done until like it was like 7 p.m by the time i had everything cooked and so we put the kids to bed and like fed viv a different dinner and then when they were in bed we realized that it was the first time that we were just eating dinner alone without anybody else there since we've lived in this house so it was nice we had like a little bit of an extra date night tonight because the night just ended up being free sitting here and singing and playing guitar and uh, gonna go to bed pretty soon. Don't drink and drive. <laughs> Before I end this vlog, I wanted to remind you guys that you can check out Dossier's perfumes with my discount code. And yeah, and you can save a, well. a good chunk of money on your order with Dossier. I think you guys will really like it. I am really loving them so far. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. And until my next one, I love you guys. I'm praying for you guys and I will see you soon. Mm -hmm.